Welcome all. Uh, I'd like to introduce to you, uh, go by Dick. It's uh, Richard Schimmel, he goes by Dick. Uh, Mr. Schimmel was a radar operator with the newly formed radar unit, Signal Company Aircraft Warning Hawaii. He served as a plotter and switchboard operator at the operations center on Oahu. He was off duty during the attack at Pearl Harbor, having been relieved by Joe McDonald the night before. Richard immediately returned to duty upon hearing of the attack. I just want to welcome Mr. Schimmel here this morning. Thank you. A rousing of applause. Okay, uh, my story's a simple one. I was working radar. Now, radar was first introduced to the United States in uh, August the 14th from England. We received it from England. They, they wanted us to get in a war with them, I guess, so they gave us all the information on the radar. I enlisted in the Army in August of 1920, 1920, 40, 1940. I was, uh, and it was 28 days later that I uh, ended up over in Hawaii, which I asked for, and our radar was Brand new. Nobody knew anything about radar. Even we didn't know anything about radar. And it took us maybe uh, five, six months to get acclimated to it and get all the equipment. And we uh, we start operating our radars about, I'd say, around September of 1940. And on on uh, on December 7th, actually, prior before December 7th. They had a, a warning. They couldn't find the Japanese Navy. And everybody was on the alert. So what happened was, would you believe, two days or three days before December 7th, we were off the alert. Our radars were instructed not to only operate maybe like from four until six in the morning. Well, this happened th this day there was a man being taught how to use the radar. And he picked up these Japanese planes on the radar, but he wasn't sure who they were, or we didn't know who they were. And his friend, Joe, McDon uh, Joe Lockard, he went and checked it out, and he called into the information center, is where I work, and I was off because of, I was relieved by the Joe McDonald. When he called into Joe McDonald and told him that they had picked up a large number of planes, and they were coming towards us. Joe McDonald immediately went to the lieutenant who was in charge of the, of the uh, operation that day. Well, the uh, lieutenant knew there was a flight of planes coming in from the United States. We were sending bombers in from the United States, and he thought they were them. But I always thought if they knew that these bombers were coming from the west, and these other planes were coming from the east, they should have had some of the other radars look into it, but they never did. So this is when the, the bombing started. They, they got in into us, and uh, as soon as Joe found out, he called me, and uh, I came down to the information center, and we checked everything out, and we, we didn't realize what was happening. So that, uh, that started the whole thing. The war started, you know. I mean, radar was very, very new at that time. And until uh, we had people who learned how to operate them, it did take us some time. If you have any questions, let me know. Any questions? Yeah. Must have a question or two. I'm new at this. I don't know <laughs> too much about it. Yeah. Were you on base at the time? I was down what they called the, it was called the information center. Later, it was command center. And it was actually, when the December seventh came, I seen Nimitz, I seen Short, I seen not Nimitz, uh, Kimmel. I saw all those big shots. They all came down where I worked. We were like the hub, and uh, it it was a real busy place. And so when the when the war started, we couldn't do, but they did a hell of a job on us. You know, and they were smart. They knew what they were doing. Yeah. yeah. I just arrived. I don't know what you talked about earlier. Um, 
with the uh, the Arizona. Did they say why it was so in such shallow water? Why they couldn't rescue those guys in there? Yeah, that's something I couldn't tell you. That was that was all the Navy's department. I was in the I was in the Army Air Force or whatever it was uh, that time. Actually, we were so new we never even had an insignia. We had nothing. We were we were just like nobody. We were all by ourselves up in the mountains and uh, wherever we put our people. So we were pretty new to uh, to the to the services. Actually, we never had like I said an insignia and. Uh, we start getting men in, we had to teach them and all that kind of stuff. That was after the war they came in. Yeah, yeah. But the radar, they didn't want to operate the radar too much because it was too new and we didn't know that much about it. But putting them together, the first one we put up, we had to put up by the bays, we put up by color. Red goes in red and green goes in green and that's actually when England gave it to us, they, no, they just gave us all the information, but and it's how to put them together. They didn't send anybody over for training. Not with us, no. No, it was just a contingent of men. We had like we started out with 50 men, you know, and all of a sudden we're up to 200, 300 men after the war started, and it was pretty tough getting things going. Why did they pick just between 4 a.m. and 6 a.m. to operate the radar? Why not? because it was new and they didn't want to break it. <laughs> that, was, that was the whole story. They didn't want to, they didn't want to break it, you know? <laughs> you guys to use it, right? Yeah. So. They came over, they dropped, they dropped one. They would have liked to find us where we were. And it was, we were right near Triple General Hospital, the old one. And, we, and actually we were, our information center, we built it on a dump. And the one bomb dropped in, dropped in the middle of the bump. We were very lucky, you know, and because they would like to find us where we were, yeah. Did you stay in the uh, war right through until 45? Yeah, I was, uh, I spent 56 months overseas. I left there and then I went over to Maui and went into Maui and helped them set up an information center there. Then I was sent down to the Canton Islands, which is a hellhole. Anybody who likes rats, they would have loved it down there because that place was loaded with rats. You couldn't, you couldn't eat on your bed anything or a crumb or something like that. The rats were there that night trying to get at it, you know. So then I went to another island and uh, then I came back and most of the time I was crying over help setting information centers and stuff like that. Have you been back down there for anything? What's that? Have you ever gone back to Hawaii? I was going back every five years. You know, we were going to go over. We I belonged to an organization. It was the uh, Pearl Harbor Survivors, and uh, that was nice. But they were mostly Navy. So we got together. We actually we started one here in Pennsylvania. We had the Pennsylvania Survivors. We had our own organization here, and uh, and we we. Uh, we used to meet once a year for a reunion, and every December 7th we'd go out to Harrisburg, to the capital, you know. But right now I think there's maybe like eight or nine of us left, the original one. What was the worst part of it? I think the worst part was living down in Canton Island. Actually, uh, did you ever read the, the book Unbroken? Hmm? Isn't that a story? It's one of the nicest stories, the best stories I've ever read. Well, he landed there on uh, Canton Island one time. And well, was it Japanese island before he went there? Uh, no, that was, uh, I think it was British controlled. Actually, he used to have a, uh, they used to have a stop over there. Pan Am used to have a stop from there to between the United States and China. And they also had a ship there, it was called a President Taylor. And the Japs came over and forced it up and the, and the beached. And they couldn't get it off the beach. So, and he would, uh, we had one guy come over, who was, we used to call him Wash Machine Charlie. He'd come over maybe like every other night or every fourth night, and he'd drop a couple bombs, right? And one time I wonder why we didn't fight back. 
And somebody said, the, the officer in charge of the island said he didn't want to give his gun emplacements away. It was stupid. Yeah. You know. And the, the sharks, uh, the, you'd see the sharks going around the outside. One time a plane was coming in, and this, this island, they went and they made like, uh, they had one tree, it was a palm tree, and they had, uh, they made a bunker like, and they, re they had little lights on there when the planes were coming in. Well, the plane took a, made a mistake. He saw the light and he landed, but he forgot it was a reflection in the ocean. And it and the, and went into the ocean. Yeah. Yeah. But Cotton Island was something else. In fact, they took all the inhabitants off, and I don't know what it is today. Yeah. Yeah. No, I guess that's it. Thank you very much for your service. Thank you very much for your service. Thank you. Thank you for remembering. Yeah. Good job. Okay, buddy. Yeah. See ya. I live down in Hellertown. Oh, Hellertown. That's yeah. a good place to be from, Hellertown. When you were off duty during the attack, you huh? were, were you close to I, I was, Did you see what was going on? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. In fact, uh, I, uh, as soon as uh, Joe called me, I went back, back to duty, you know, because I was a senior. I was actually over Joe. Yeah. So I had to go back, and that, that's, when we, that's when we seen all these admirals and everybody coming running in, you know. In fact, I was there when the... Uh, what the heck were they called? The uh, investigating committee. I can't think of his name now. There was a supreme. Hmm. Well, they came and investigated the whole the whole thing, you know. And I had to be interviewed then, you know. It's in Washington, someplace, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think you did great. Thank you. Yeah. That's right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate you, sir. Thank you. Yeah.